I am not a cat person, but I gotta say, cats are kinda crushing it out there. All over the world, cat populations continue to grow while most wild predators are in steep decline. Apart from dogs, cats are the most abundant predatory mammals the world has ever seen. There are between 600 million and a billion domestic cats in the world. But here's the thing, we actually have no idea what cats are doing when we are not around, which is a pretty typical cat thing, right? So I met up with some scientists conducting not only the biggest study of cat movement in the world, but the largest tracking study of any species to find out what exactly cats are doing out there. I'm Shane Campbell-Staten, and this is Human Footprint. You actually own cats. I We have four cats here in the house. I'm not sure own is the proper verb, okay. but uh, they live here, and uh, <laughs> they run the show, put okay. it that way. In the biology world, Jonathan is a legend for his research on lizards. But outside the lab, cats are his passion. I've always been into cats, but it never occurred to me to do anything professionally with them because they're just cats. But he just couldn't help himself. And now he's written a whole book on the science of cats. So how do we, how do we get from the truly wild cat to these guys that are running around your house. The idea is this, that when humans adopted an agricultural lifestyle, we started raising crops and storing them. And that, of course, attracted rodents. And this was in the native range of the African wildcat. These wildcats started hanging around human settlements. The less afraid of us they were, the better they did. Over time, cats evolved to be friendlier, or at least more tolerant of human company. We started appreciating them too, and soon we were bringing them with us around the world. Let me see one of these cats. All right, well, I'll go get one right here. He's in his little basket over here. It's showtime, Nelson. This is Nelson. He's the one on your mug. Let me see what all this, all this noise is about. Now, if I look uncomfortable here, it's because I'm very allergic to cats. A key phase in domestication in general is when humans take over the breeding process. Cats became semi-domestic simply by hanging around and catching mice. It's only for the last few hundred years that we've controlled who mated with whom, producing dozens of distinct breeds, like the American Burmese in yeah. my lap. <laughs> Here you go, Nelson. We'll put you back in your basket. I know we're gonna pay for that later. So you mentioned that a couple of your cats are inside outside cats. You know, when they're out cruising, do you have any idea what they're doing out there? Well, mostly no. <laughs> so none of your business is what I'm doing out there. <laughs> cats would be appalled to know that researchers are working hard to uncover their secret lives outdoors. Roland Kays knows more about animal tracking than almost anyone on the planet. What he gets up to in his own time, that's his business. Hey, welcome. Hey, how's it going? I thank the good Lord for antihistamines, because this was not in my contract. Is this not the perfect place to talk about cats? Uh, there's uh, definitely a lot of cats in here. <laughs> it's a cat coffee shop, and if you want to, you can walk out of here with your very own cat. Okay, I will pass, but I, I appreciate <laughs> the sentiment. You know you got too many cats when you start giving them away for free. When cats go out, cats hunt, right? I mean, this is why we domesticated them in the first place. So one cat catching a few things isn't a big deal. It's when you magnify that by 600 million, <laughs> that all of a sudden, maybe it is a big deal. The problem is, scientists know next to nothing about what cats do in the wild or what their impact might be. Roland's answer, track cats the way we track wild predators, by fitting them with GPS-enabled collars. Several of those cats were right here in Raleigh, including a cat named Kraken. 
Hello. Hey, how are you? Oh, good. How are you? Come on in. Thanks. Thanks. So she came to us as a stray before we decided to bring her inside. Is it like a mystery to you, like what her life is like out there? Oh yeah, absolutely. I found out about Muhammad's study, and so we signed her up. So this is the tracker that we are using on the cats. What we have here is the microchip that has both the accelerometer and the GBS. The accelerometer measures the cat's movement, left, right, forward, reverse, and the GPS tells us where the cat is. We save the data on the collar and then we retrieve it from the animal, then connect it to a computer to download the saved data. Okay, so the cat has to bring you the data back. Yeah. With this study, you know, what will we know about the lives of these cats that we didn't know before? Well, so one of the things that we're hoping the more detailed data will show us is where kind of exactly they're going and what sort of habitats they're using, you know, how often they're crossing streets, for example, and if they're going into the, the natural areas where they might, on one hand, encounter, you know, a coyote or something scary, but also could potentially, you know, be hunting native species that we'd be more concerned about out in a more natural area than compared to sort of the more neighborhood uh, urban areas. So understanding exactly where the cats go and also what their behavior is. Cool, so should we release the Kraken? I'm so glad I got to say that. <laughs> I think this is Kraken right here. It went down here to this house and then it came back um, and you can see the one Whoa. track way over there. That was a bit of a surprise. Roland's study isn't just the biggest study of cat movement in the world. It's the largest tracking study of any species. Roland sent GPS collars to collaborators all over the world. So this is just a map of the Earth, and I've got pink dots uh, anywhere that we were tracking cats. And so we've got uh, Ollie, Ailey, Amber Rose, Amelia, right? Just A, a to Z, <laughs> probably. We've got all kinds of different, different ones. It turns out most cats don't stray too far from home. Our average across all 900 cats was 3.5 hectares. That's about six or seven football fields. And the next thing we had to figure out is how do we put that into perspective? Roland compared data from domestic cats to their closest wild relatives. What we found was that the domestic cats have a four to 10 times more ecological impact on their prey than do wild species, but that's gonna be concentrated within basically 100 meters of someone's house. One of their biggest footprints can be seen on migrating bird populations. There are some estimates in the United States that cats kill sort of one to three billion birds a year. Billion? <laughs> yes, but it's even more small mammals. It's like seven to 10 billion small mammals. And the impacts of cats in places like Australia, New Zealand, and Oceanic Islands have been devastating. There are examples of animals that have been completely hunted to extinction by cats. Some biologists consider them the worst invasive species alive, but Roland's got a plan to curb the impact of these cuddly killers. It could start by adding an accelerometer to our cat's collars. The accelerometer basically measures the orientation and the movement of the collar in three dimensions. So now here's the three axes, okay. X, Y, and Z axis, and you can see they're very flat. So that means the animal's resting. So here you can see, look how rhythmic this is. Okay. So that's a walking or running cat. If the accelerometer can recognize a walking or running cat, what else can it tell us? And so what, what our goal is, is to get artificial intelligence algorithms on the collar, recognizing this cat's about to hunt. And one of the amazing things, so birds have alarm calls and they listen to each other. So they know, like a chickadee knows the alarm call of a titmouse. So we can have basically a bird alarm call go off on the cat's collars and all the birds would be alerted. Look out, predator here. It seems like an ingenious solution, but the flip side is that also like cats learn, right? Is it possible that cats will just learn to hunt a different way? I think, I'd say it's highly possible that I will be outsmarted by a cat. <laughs> yes. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. uh, you do, cats learn, uh, if you give a cat a bell, it learns how to walk without triggering the bell. Okay. And so it's possible that it could figure out that when it does a certain thing, there's this noise that comes from its collar. I don't know, we'll have okay. to see. But I guess the difference is that the bell doesn't have the ability to adapt 
to the cat. But an AI potentially has the ability to adapt and learn along with the cat. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. So that's, thank you. That, that's, that's really cool. That's what I did. <laughs> We've made a pact with cats. Even as they deplete the natural world around us, they seem to enrich another part of our lives. Sure, their modern existence can be pretty bizarre, and damn do they make my eyes itch. But compared to their wild relatives, one thing's for sure, cats are evolutionary winners. If you want more Human Footprint, you can tune in to the full-length series on the PBS app or your local PBS station. Check out the link in the description to watch a full episode and to find out more about the show.